Fruitless Romance. Chapter 1 to Chapter 5. The howling winds and raging thunder outside the Barnett residence were incredibly loud. Even so, those sounds did not affect the beautiful lady lying on the bed. Summer Woods was sleeping soundly due to a high fever. In her drowsy state, she felt somebody lie down next to her. All of a sudden, that person abruptly reached out to grab the hand she placed above the blankets. Squeezing her hand tightly, a wave of cold and sharp pain instantly washed over her entire body. Before she could even react, she heard the man's low and hoarse voice saying something extremely contemptuous. Summer Woods, you look like a slut waiting to be a fasterisk kid. Are you that desperate? That man's alluringly thin lips were tightly pressed together. However, the voice that came out of those lips was frosty it was as cold as ice. Those words of his instantly woke her up from her slumber. At the same instant, his chilly eyes narrowed abruptly. His large, fair hands grabbed her by the chin as he glared at her with a stern gaze. Do you know the consequences of challenging my boundaries? You pretentious woman. I'll let go. Unfortunately, her voice that was hoarse from the high fever sounded more like a thinly veiled invitation to him instead. That short little sentence made the aura surrounding him become more frightening. And the strength of his grip involuntarily increased. Without warning, he threw aside the blankets that were tightly wrapped around her. The look in his eyes was unusually savage as his large hands ripped apart her pajamas without mercy. She panicked. The memory of what happened at the hotel three years ago surfaced in her mind again. He had been completely drunk. But she still had a trace of reason left in her despite resisting his advances back then. She had been powerless against him. In the end, she had no choice but to painfully endure the feeling of the man ravaging her like a beast. No. Let go. Let go. Ha. You look like you want to spread your legs for me. Her struggles made him livid. What a shameless woman. Just touching her makes me sick. You ray waiting for me to f asterisk cku. Aren't you? His voice was bitter and cold. He sounded like Satan himself. At the same time, the temperature of their surroundings seemed to drop instantly because of his words. No, I am not. Knock, knock, knock. Young Master Edward. Young Mistress Summer. Old Madam Barnett wants to meet you in the living room. Just then. The respectful voice of the Barnett family butler, Sebastian Hopkins, sounded from outside the door and interrupted the man's vicious actions. Taking advantage of the man as sudden pause in movements, Summer used all the strength she had in her body to push the unsuspecting man away from her. Then, she speedily got out of bed and cowered in a corner of the room. She tightly wrapped the clothes the man had torn to shreds around her body while trembling all over. Turning around, she saw the man's chilly expression clearly. She met his cold sword-like gaze, lifting her eyes to look at him despite her fear. Her hoarse voice was mixed with a sense of detachment. Mr. Barnett, I would never bother you unless it was inevitable. That was the truth she would never contact this man whom she had not seen in three years unless it was inevitable. This man was her husband in name only, the heir to the mighty Barnett family of Wrongvale City Edward Barnett. Although he was only 27 years old, he was a legend who monopolized the business industry in Starcliffe City. He was known as the most brutal executioner in the business world due to his aloof and diabolical personality. However, he was a man even more fiendish than Satan himself in his personal life. Feeling extremely uneasy. Her large round eyes remained on guard against the man standing in front of her. He hated her how could she not know. Regrettably, she had never had a choice be it in the past or the present. Young Master Edward. Young Mistress Summer. Seeing as there were no responses coming from inside the room, Sebastian's respectful voice rang out from outside the door again. Tell Grandma that we will be right there. The man narrowed his eyes slightly. His ink-black eyes were staring fixedly at the woman cowering in the corner. Then, his indifferent eyes sharpened considerably as he uttered words that were even more bone-chillingly cold. 
Summer couldn't help feeling a little uncomfortable with him staring at her in that manner. As a result, her head slowly dropped in response, feeling extremely flustered. Her hands that were clutching at the clothes around her chest tightened their grip significantly. Summer Woods, don't forget who you are. Dante provoke me. Otherwise, you will suffer the consequences. After saying that, Edward got up from the bed and took out some wet tissues from the bedside table. He wiped his hands carefully, acting as if he had just touched something that disgusted him greatly. After that, he turned around gracefully and narrowed his eyes slightly. The look in his eyes turned grim. Walking to the door, he stopped suddenly and said, If you ray lusting for the touch of a man, I don't mind bringing in several men to satisfy you. Summer watched and listened, but her body was so stiff that she couldn't move. In contrast, her heart was surprisingly empty. She held no expectations for this relationship to begin with. In the brightly lit hall, Edward casually sat on the bronze genuine leather sofa. Despite his nonchalance, he exuded a domineering and powerful presence that couldn't be hidden. It made it hard for anybody to ignore him even if they wanted to. Pausing slightly, she did not glance at the man but straightened her back and lowered her eyes instead. She turned to the grey-haired yet amiable-looking old lady sitting on the sofa in the middle and respectfully said, Grandma, I am sorry for coming down late. Summer, come and sit here with me. Are you feeling better? Look at yourself. You're an adult now. Why can't you take better care of yourself? Why didn't you take the day off and come back to rest when you were having a 40 degrees centigrade fever? Rosie Carter immediately asked Summer to sit beside her as soon as she saw the girl. She loved this young girl from the bottom of her heart. She glanced at her grandson as that thought crossed her mind. He was simply sitting nearby and watching them passively. Thus, she sighed helplessly in her heart. I asked you to come back for two things. You can go wherever you want and do whatever you want once you complete them. She held Summer as hand while directing her gaze at Edward, who was sitting on the other end of the sofa. Edward was as stony-faced as usual even when facing his grandmother. Saying in a gloomy voice, I will stay if I am a match. In other words, he was not going to stay for even a second longer if he was not a donor match. No, her expression became cold in response. And she spoke in a tone that allowed for no dissension. Grandma, you ignored my wishes three years ago and insisted that I marry this woman. I acceded to your demands and married her. But at the same time, I told you that we will be a married couple in name only. Aside from that, we are strangers to each other. Yet, you keep trying to make me spend the rest of my life with this woman. Well, that is completely impossible because I will never touch her again. More than that, I will never allow a scheming woman like her to bear my child. I fell for her tricks once. But I will never let myself be tricked by her again. While speaking, he swept a resentful glare at Summer. Summer's body stiffened abruptly when she felt the man's gaze on her. No, no, how can this be? If he is not a donor match, then we must have another child. That is the only way for Charles to survive. He must sleep with me. Charles Barnett was the son Summer and Edward had given birth to after spending one night together three years ago. He was Summer's pride and joy. She loved him with all her heart. Unfortunately, the gods did not deal the innocent and lovely child a good hand in life. From the time of his birth, he had been afflicted with liver disease. As such, he was constantly in pain. Despite that, he was a considerate child. He would console her instead every time he was in pain so that she would not worry about him. Although his name had always been on the liver transplant list. They received no updates about it despite how long they had been waiting. Just recently, he celebrated his third birthday when his condition deteriorated rapidly. The doctors announced that his condition would only get worse with time if they couldn't find a suitable liver donor in time. If things were to continue as it was, it wouldn't make a difference anymore even if they suddenly found a liver donor down the road. Therefore, 
She could only rely on Edward now. Sensing her panic, Rosie gently patted her hand as if to say, Relax, I am here for you. Edward, for the past four generations, our family has only had one son to continue the family lineage. Three years ago, you brought that woman with you away from Starcliff City the day after your wedding. Since then, you've returned away from both Summer and Charles. Does it not hurt your guilty conscience at all? Charles is your son. Rosie couldn't stop her voice from getting louder and louder as she spoke. As a result, Sebastian, who was standing by the side, hurriedly leaned close to her ear and whispered, Old Madam Barnett, the doctor has asked that you refrain from getting angry. Similarly, Summer became worried and quickly tried to appease her anger. Grandma, please don't get angry. You need to watch your health. In response, she waved them away dismissively, indicating that they didn't need to worry so much. It is not as if you don't know how serious Charles' illness is. When Summer heard those words, her heart ached even more painfully. I don't know what I did in my past life that caused my baby to suffer so much in this life. If possible, I wish all that pain happened to me instead. Edward, one month. It took you one whole month to come back. How can you be so cold-hearted? Remember this, even if you refuse to admit it. Charles is your son not anybody else's. Summer has been working herself to the bone because of Charles' illness so much so that she didn't even have any time to rest and collapsed out of exhaustion. As a father, where were you all this time? Grandma, I was very busy. Starcliff City. Edward frowned deeply. His suffocatingly handsome face looked like it was covered in a layer of frost, exuding a coldness that seeped into one's soul. His thin knife-like lips were tightly pressed together into a hard line, making one shudder in fear. I have never been scolded so fiercely by my grandmother before. Everything that happened today is all caused by this pretentious woman. Busy. Were you busy accompanying that woman as she made plans to travel the world? Rosie's voice became several shades colder than before. Similarly, her gaze became sharper too. Up until now, she had been waiting for her grandson to ask about Charles' condition of his own volition. However, it seemed like he honestly did not care for Charles or Summer at all. While thinking that, she couldn't help feeling even more sorry for Summer. The first thing you need to do is go to the hospital and check if you can be a match for Charles. Upon hearing that, Edward lifted an eyebrow but did not express any objections. The second thing you need to do is have another child with Summer, she said with a stern expression. Sculling fiercely, she did not beat around the bush and went straight to the point. When he heard those words, his expression immediately darkened. He narrowed his black eyes and pursed his lips before yelling. You want me to sleep with that woman again? That is impossible. I am the one to decide whether it is possible or not. Edward. You only need to give birth to a healthy child. After that, you can go wherever you want with whomever you want to. I want to say another word about it. Grandma, I only need him to save Charlie. Summer begged. She held Rosie's hand tightly as tears filled her eyes. Charles is my everything. I can do anything for his sake. I can't live without him. Summer, I have my own considerations. We will know once we get the blood test done at the hospital tomorrow. In the worst case scenario, you must have another child with Edward. The Barnett family must have a healthy successor to the family lineage. Grandma, Edward was just about to speak when Rosie interrupted him in displeasure. I am tired. I am going to rest. You should rest earlier since you just came back today. Don't forget you will need to undergo all sorts of medical tests at the hospital tomorrow. After saying that, Rosie got up and headed to her bedroom upstairs. With that, only Edward and Summer were left in the living room. Then, Edward narrowed his deep and slanted eyes slightly as he stared at Summer with an indifferent gaze that had darkened considerably. This was your real goal, wasn't it? Huh? Summer could not follow what Edward was thinking. Therefore, 
She did not know why he was questioning her in such a mocking tone again. You want another child just so that you can inherit the Barnett family, SSS. Edward's deep black eyes narrowed dangerously. A cold light flashed in the depths of his dark gaze. His handsome face was tense. And his thin lips were tightly pressed into a cold, firm arc. No, that is not it. I only want you to save Charles. Her eyes were pleading earnestly. There was nothing else she wished for, she only wanted for him to save Charles. After all, Charles was suffering so much even though he was still so young. Is that really all? All of a sudden, he pressed against her so tightly that she had nowhere to escape to. He stretched out his hands imposingly, trapping her between him and the wall. At that moment, his aura assaulted the very air she breathed in again. Her body was so stiff as a result that she forgot to struggle against him. Summer Woods, did you forget about what I said to you before I left? When she heard the words coming out of his mouth, her pupils dilated rapidly from the threat hiding behind them. It was a mixture of fear, anxiety, and indecision. Seeing her fearful expression, he finally seemed satisfied and continued saying, It looks like you do remember. If that is the case, how can I let the consequences of provoking me disappoint you? Although his good looks were accompanied by a graceful smile, she only saw the disdain in his expression. His words bore down on her again before she could say anything. You pretentious woman. Just looking at you makes me sick. His oppressive posture made her feel very awkward and uncomfortable. At the same time, his words made her raise her head subconsciously. She looked straight into his deep eyes that were shining with a cold light. When she saw him for the first time, she had known at a glance that this man would cause her to sink into the abyss. And now, this face appeared in front of her again. They were standing very close together, so close that she could see herself reflected in his eyes. As she was not a short person, she only needed to lift her head slightly to look straight into his eyes even though she was only wearing indoor slippers. Her gaze caused him to furrow his eyebrows lightly in dissatisfaction. All of a sudden, he freed up an arm and wrapped it around her waist tightly, pressing the two of them even closer together. Summer Woods, you better not f asterisking make more trouble for me. Those last words were snarled softly. It was cold yet filled with infinite rage and hatred. I can do anything as long as you save Charles, including leaving the Barnett family, she said firmly while staring into his deep black eyes. Aside from what she just mentioned, she had no idea what else she could say to make this furious man in front of her calm down. From the beginning, he believed that the incident back then was something she had set up all because she shamelessly wanted to marry into wealth. However, the truth was that she had been framed too. Will this man believe me even if I told him that? She mulled over it and immediately obtained an answer in her heart. No, he won't he believe me. He won't he believe me no matter what I say. He might even think that I am trying to find an excuse to clear my name. If so, why should I go the extra mile to tell him the truth when I know that he won't he even believe me in the first place? Why should I let him humiliate me again? I only have Charles. He is my only son. I can do anything for his sake. Ha! Huh. Leave the Barnett family. Are you really willing to do that? She really is a cunning and scheming woman. She went to such lengths just to marry into the Barnett family back then. Yet now she is saying that she will leave the Barnett family. Is that even possible? I can do it. If it is for Charles, I don't care about anything else. Listening to Summer's words, Edward's eyes locked on her eyes like a lion waiting for its prey. The two of them were mere inches away from each other. It wasn't until now that he properly looked at the woman who became his wife three years ago. To his surprise, he suddenly realized that she was barefaced. Even so, her skin was as soft and fair as a baby's. Perhaps it was due to her high fever, but her cheeks were flushed suspiciously and her lips were rather pale. A simple glance made his heart stop for a moment. However, that feeling disappeared in an instant. 
The strength of his arm around her waist was too great. Besides, she did not want to be in such intimate contact with him under these circumstances. Thus, she could only lift her head uncomfortably to maintain a certain distance from this man. As everybody knew, this posture made her slender neck curve into a beautiful arc. Her fair skin was completely unblemished, extending all the way until the depression of her collarbone. You don't believe me. She glanced at the man in surprise. Didn't he want me to leave the Barnett family? I've already made my intention clear. Why doesn't he believe me? Why should I trust you? His cold words woke her up from her dream. It is only expected that he doesn't believe me. Right. Then, why don't you tell me what I can do for you to save Charles? She knew that he would definitely go to the hospital since Rosie had ordered him to. However, he was capable of switching out the results if he was a match. I know very well what kind of person he is. There is nothing in this world that can force him to do something against his will. Except for that incident three years ago. For three years, he had abandoned Charles without a care. Hence, she did not dare to put her hopes on the fact that he would save Charles just because Charles was his son. She could only plead with him in this manner, hoping that he could save Charles. Will you do everything I ask of you? He narrowed his eyes dangerously, pressing closer and closer to her face. That s right. As long as before she could finish her sentence. The phone in his pocket rang untimely. He loosened the arm he had around her waist and took out his phone. When he saw the name displayed on the caller ID, he immediately turned to the window and answered the call. Upon seeing that, she smiled self-deprecatingly. There is only one person that can make him so nervous. That woman is the only one there are no exceptions. If it wasn't he for me, he would have fled the nest with his lover a long time ago. What about me? Even if it wasn't the Edward Barnett, I would probably be stuck with just another Edward Barnett anyway. While she was reminiscing about the events three years ago, he ended the call at some point and quietly resumed his position in front of her again. I will go to the hospital. His indifferent voice sounded out softly, dragging her out of her reverie. Her face lit up with excitement at those words. Great. Thank you. Then, I'll see you at the hospital tomorrow. He agreed. That means Charles can finally enjoy his life as a normal child. His gaze flickered as he brushed past her. Reaching out, he clutched her arm tightly. His voice was dyed with considerable fury. Did you think it would be that simple? What do you want? Just say it. She answered resignedly. She knew that it couldn't have been that simple. Besides. She would agree to his conditions no matter what he asked for. At that moment, she was simply filled with joy, thinking that Charles finally had hope for survival. However, she was unaware that his next words would drag her back into hell. I want a divorce. Upon hearing those words, Summer paused for a moment before saying, Okay, I agree. She never expected that what Edward would say next would make her feel so insulted. Be my lover after our divorce. What Edward said made Summer turn deathly pale. She turned around to look at him in shock, feeling as if she had just been struck by a bolt of lightning. I don't have time to let you consider my offer. Meanwhile, Edward S. Deep. Ink black eyes narrowed slightly. He once again exuded a blast of cold aura that no one could ignore. Become his lover. Do I really have to agree to that? But. Is there any other way if I refuse? Why? It was a subconscious response. She stood there coldly, her large eyes staring fixedly at the frosty man standing in front of her. I thought he doesn't he want to have anything to do with me. Why did he come up with a condition like that? Will you agree? Or not? He ignored her question and asked another question instead. He had never had any patience for this woman. When he saw her hesitation, his scorn for this woman grew even stronger. As soon as he turned away, the woman grabbed his arm tightly. It was accompanied by her desperate voice. I agree. Ivy said it myself. I can do anything if it's for Charles' sake. However, 
Unbeknownst to her, her eyes inadvertently filled with tears that suddenly threatened to fall when she agreed to his request. If I had not received the phone call just now, I might have felt bad for this woman weeping so soundlessly. But, she isn't worthy of my pity. You pretentious woman. Save your tears. Don't cry in front of me. I don't want to be dirtied by them. The man as cold words once again stabbed into her broken heart. He really does hate me. Humiliating me in this manner does it make you happy. For some reason. She paused and blurted out those words. Then. She continued. Charles is very adorable. I am sure you all like him when you see him. Those were very ordinary words. But they felt like needles stabbing into his heart. Those words filled his heart with an unspeakable emotion that made him feel extremely agitated. After that, Summer turned around and went upstairs. Just as she finished changing, Edward opened the door and walked in. She had her back to the door as she packed up her clothes. All of a sudden, she felt a strong male aura enveloping her. His cold body pressed against her and his hot breath tickled her ear. Since you agreed to it, why don't we start tonight? She froze for a moment before her body began struggling against him desperately. Mr. Barnett, please let go of me. I know he doesn't he want to touch me. I could tell the moment he walked into the room. That is why I don't understand why he wants me to be his lover. Is it purely for the sake of revenge? But, he is somebody who stands at the top of the world. He has many other means to get revenge on a person. Why is he keeping me by his side? What else do you want to play? He asked. At the same time, he abruptly pulled her into his arms. His lips were filled with extreme fury as he kissed her lips. It wasn't even a kiss it was tearing and biting. Is he this what you wanted? Back then it was to become the young mistress of the Barnett family. What else do you want now? The family assets. The mocking, ruthless, and even disdainful words he spoke reminded her at all times about how dangerous the man in front of her was. As well as how much he hated her. Mr. Barnett. Please don't do this. She continued to struggle. In the end, she wore down the last bit of patience he had for her. Thus. He exerted great force in his hands to rip apart the white shirt she was wearing. You agreed to be my lover so eagerly just now. Are you regretting it now? It looks like you don't really want to save your son after all. At the mention of her son, her pupils contracted again. Just what does he want? I did agree, but I need to visit Charles at the hospital tonight. Since I agreed to it, I have to keep my word. But. I promised Charles that I will stay with him at the hospital tonight. I don't want to see his disappointed expression. Are you negotiating with me? Woman, you better know your place. His sudden gloomy and savage expression made her feel nervous subconsciously. His eyes darkened as he stared at her without blinking. Her eyes were defensive as she stared at the man that was taller than her by more than a head. Her tone became even more pleading. Can we do it tomorrow? I really can't make it tonight. You ray just my lover. You don't have the right to negotiate terms with me. As he spoke, the movements of his hands grew more vicious. At the same time, his expression became more furious too. It didn't take long before her clothes were torn to shreds. No, Dante. Dante, it felt as if scenes from her nightmare were appearing in her mind. One after the other. No. I don't want to ever experience it again. The fear in her heart caused her struggles to intensify so much so that she managed to gather enough strength to push him away from her. Standing up, she grabbed her jacket from the side of the bed in a panic, wrapped it around her body, and ran outside. Stop. Go ahead and run if you no longer wish to save your son. He roared furiously. However. She simply turned and glanced at him before leaving in a rush. That look was enough to stun him senseless. Two minutes later, the sound of a car driving out of the yard finally brought him back to his senses. His ink black and narrow eyes narrowed slightly, as he glanced in the direction of the bedroom door that was wide open.
A look of surprise flashed across his eyes before they turned back into their usual indifference. His thin and beautiful cherry lips pursed slightly as he roared out one word. Why? Inside Rosie's bedroom. Old Madam Barnett. You guessed right. Young Mistress Summer just left in her car. Upon hearing those words, Rosie, who was resting with her eyes closed, slowly opened her eyes again and sighed in frustration. When will he finally open his eyes to the truth? Old Madam Barnett, young Master Edward is still young. I am sure he will understand your intentions in the future, Sebastian respectfully said beside her. Understand. She couldn't help smiling bitterly. By the time that brat understands, it might already be too late. To be honest, old Madam Barnett, children need to live their own lives. Young Master Edward is an adult. He knows what he is doing. However, she ignored his words. She simply replied, It is late. You should get some rest. Yes, old Madam Barnett. When the bedroom door closed again, Rosie finally muttered under her breath, Edward, you will regret this one day. It was night. The lights were just turning on, dyeing the city in magnificent colors. The city's nightscape had a moist feeling to it especially since a bout of heavy rain had just passed. It made one feel refreshed when breathing in the night air. When Summer drove the car in the parking lot of the hospital's inpatient department, she finally felt some of her fear and anxiety abating slightly. Taking several deep breaths, she finally managed to calm herself down. She glanced at the time it was 10 p.m. She had promised Charles that she would reach at 9 p.m., she was already an hour late. Thus, she did not dare to delay any further. She turned around, grabbed the clothes she prepared in advance, and got out of the car. Entering the hospital, she found a restroom and quickly changed her clothes. After that, she rushed toward the hospital ward. The next day, Charles woke up early in the morning. He silently looked at Summer, who was sitting next to him, with a gloomy expression. After a long while, he finally spoke in a babyish voice. Mommy, can I not meet him? Summer paused slightly when she heard those words. Then, she smilingly asked, Why? I, I am not ready, he replied, lowering his head. Compared to other children his age. He was a relatively mature child, he had his own opinion in whatever he did. When she arrived last night, he had yet to sleep. He had been stubbornly waiting for her arrival. Once she told him that Edward was coming to the hospital today to meet him, he had reacted in a similar manner, silently and expressionlessly. He was her son, so she understood a little bit of what he was thinking. Although Edward had completely ignored the two of them for the last three years, she didn't want him to think badly of Edward. Charlie, are you mad at your daddy? Mommy, daddy won't he like me. While talking, his originally pale and small face paled even further. Summer looked at her son and felt her heart pounding slightly. Why did Charlie say that so suddenly? Charlie, you haven't even met your daddy. How do you know that he won't he like you? He definitely won't he like me. His tone became firmer than before. Charlie, I don't know why you think that way. Why would your daddy carefully prepare a gift for you every holiday if he doesn't he like you? She patiently explained, holding his hand gently. The young child had a pale complexion due to his illness. However, his ink black eyes were identical to Edward's. Every time she looked at them, she would unexpectedly sigh in her heart. Blood ties are truly amazing. Charlie, you raise such an adorable and considerate child. I am sure your daddy will love you. Seeing his unhappy expression, she turned around and leaned back against the bed. She hugged him in her arms and continued. Charlie, do you not believe what I say anymore? I believe you. Then, why don't you tell me the reason why you think that your daddy won't he like you? Upon hearing that question, Charles frowned and considered the question seriously. Summer watched him, feeling pained. At the same time, she couldn't help thinking about the incident last night. I just ran out like that last night. 
I wonder if Edward will come today. I am scared that he might pull some tricks during the medical checkup today because of last night's incident. I can't read that icy man's intentions. So I honestly don't know what he might do. The only worry I have right now is that he might not come today or he might come but refuse to save Charlie. If that happens, what will happen to Charlie? Mommy, I just haven't prepared myself to meet Daddy yet. After considering it for a while, he suddenly spoke up with a frown. Ever since I was born, I've only ever had Mommy by my side. I've never seen Daddy before. Mommy might think that I know nothing, but I actually know many things. He understood many things but didn't want to talk about them. That was because she would be very worried if he did. Every time I get bullied by my friends in kindergarten, they will say that their parents called me an unwanted child. Besides, I also overheard the conversation between Great Grandma and Mr. Hopkins last time. All the adults think that I know nothing because I am just a child. But I know the truth is that Daddy doesn't want me. He doesn't want me. So why is he coming to meet me now? Charlie, not everything in life will give you time to prepare yourself to face them. Besides, the person you're meeting is your daddy. What else do you need to prepare? While she was trying to counsel him, she suddenly heard a knock on the door. Charlie, I came to visit you. Before Summer could stand up to open the door, Rosie opened the door and walked in. Sebastian and Edward followed behind her. Summer felt her breath catching in her throat when she came face to face with Edward so abruptly. However, she quickly masked her reaction. Great Grandma, Charles happily greeted Rosie with an adorable childlike smile. Rosie felt her heart clenching with distress at the sight of him. Sitting by the bedside, she reached out to stroke his hair. UV suffered a lot in the hospital. Charlie, it makes me very sad. Great Grandma, you don't need to worry about me. When the doctor came to examine me just now, he told Mommy that I am in good condition. If you don't believe me, you can ask Mommy. Upon hearing those words, both Rosie and Summer felt sad. He is such a well-behaved child. He already knows how to ease other people as worries at such a young age. Turning away slightly, Rosie suddenly remembered Edward as presence. Thus, she quickly composed her emotions before holding his hand and saying, Charlie, look, see who I brought here for you. Didn't you tell me that you missed your daddy? Your daddy is back now. Are you happy, Charlie? The originally cheerful atmosphere immediately turned extremely awkward due to her overly abrupt introduction of Edward. She glanced at Charles, then glanced at Edward. When she saw that they weren't saying anything, she began to feel worried. On the other hand, Summer instantly recalled the conversation she just had with Charles. Without waiting for Rosie to say anything else, she stepped up with a smile and said to Charles, Are you happy, Charlie? Upon hearing Summer's voice, Charles finally smiled at Rosie and replied, Great Grandma, thank you for bringing Daddy here. After saying that, he turned his gaze to Edward, who had not spoken a single word since he walked into the hospital ward. The tall man in front of him was somebody he had seen multiple times in newspapers, magazines, and on TV. However, it was his first time meeting this man in person. This man is my daddy, the daddy that doesn't he want me. He had to admit that he couldn't help becoming rather nervous when he saw his father standing in front of him. He looks like he just walked out of the TV screen. He didn't even dare to blink, for fear that the man in front of him might disappear like before if he did. Edward was dressed in the same fashion as yesterday he wore a handmade black suit. He was at least 1.85 meters tall and had good posture. His beautiful eyes were as black as ink and they were shining with a sharp, cold light. His lips were moderately full he had good looks and a firm, confident expression. He is the ideal daddy that I've always imagined in my head. I really like this man. But, he doesn't he want me. Charles, silence caused the atmosphere in the entire hospital ward to turn gloomy. 
Despite that, Edward didn't look like he had any intention to break the silence. The two of them simply studied each other silently. Just when Summer was starting to become worried, Charles slowly said, Hello, Daddy. I am Charlie. Thanks for listening to the Brava Novel Audiobook. Welcome to download the Brava Novel app. Read the novel Fruitless Romance online and get the latest updates.